it's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Howdy, partner. Here we are with lesson number two in the Trig Graphs and Equations chapter. We are now moving on to look at what's known as exact values. So to introduce the exact values, well in the past you will have had to work out sine of 27, cos of 312, tan of 74. If you work them out, you get a decimal, it goes on forever. But there are certain angles like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, that you can use two special triangles to work out the exact value of sine, cos or tan of these angles. And as we'll see, multiples of these. If you want to work out the sine, cos or tan of 0 or 90 and multiples of them, you'll use the graphs and we'll also look at that. But if you want the sine, cos or tan of 30, 45 or 60, you use two special triangles. And these are the triangles, just in green and yellow. This triangle here, the equilateral triangle, where all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same, we're going to actually chop that down the middle, yump, and we are going to end up with this. It is just half of that triangle. The shortest side then, the side will be 1, the longest will still be 2, and the third side, how do you work that out? That's right, we use Pythagoras, 2 squared minus 1 squared, and then square root it, and you end up with root 3. So this is one triangle that we use to work out the sine, cos or tan of 30 degrees or 60. And for 45, we need this triangle here. Because these angles are the same, these sides are the same, let's just pick the easiest number there is. Let's go with 1. And the third side, how do you get that? That's right, you use Pythagoras again. Woo! So you end up with root 3. Two. And that's that triangle. So the two triangles that you need to remember are these two here. These let you work out the exact values of sine, cos or tan of 30, 45 or 60 or multiples. So taking it a stage further, well actually working out the sine of 30 or the sine of 45 or sine of 60, let's do that. So the sine of 30 degrees Find the 30 degrees, there's 30. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so the opposite's 1, the hypotenuse is 2, so we'd end up with 1 half. You can do the same for cos of 30. Cos of 30 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's root 3 over 2. And the tan is the opposite over adjacent, so that'll be 1 over root 3. You can do the same with 45, but for that we obviously need this triangle. So sine of 45, there's 45. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that's 1 over root 2. The cos of 45 is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. And tan 45, the opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 1, which is 1. And the sine of 30, sine of 30, uh, 60 rather, find the 60, there's 60. Go for the opposite over the hypotenuse, that's root 3 over 2. Cos of 60, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a half. And the tan of 60, the opposite over the adjacent, root 3 over 1 which is just root 3. So these are the two triangles that we can use to work out sine, cos or tan of 30, 45 or 60. As I said, we can take that a stage further to include 0 degrees and 90 degrees, but for that we will need the graphs. So if we think about the sine graph, here are the degrees along the bottom, although I have written it in radians. So 90 degrees was pi over 2, 180 degrees was pi, 270 was 3 pi over 2, and 360 degrees, as you know, is 2 pi radians. But you could work out the sine of 0 degrees, or sine of 0, that's just going to be at 0, it's not negative 1 or 1, it's just down at 0. You could work out the sine of 90, so sine of 90 degrees, pi over 2 is 90, and the graph there is up at 1. You can work out the cos of 0 by using the cos graph, so cos of 0 is up there at 1. Cos of 90 well, there's 90 degrees, pi over 2, so that's just down at 0. Tan of 0, you need the tan graph. So there's our tan graph. Tan of 0 is just 0. And 90 degrees, there's 90 degrees, it's pi over 2. The tan graph, well, it doesn't actually touch it. It gets closer and closer and closer and closer, but it never, ever, 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 ever touches it because that line is a vertical asymptote, which means the tan graph gets closer, but it never touches it. So you would say it was undefined. 
What's the point in this? Well, apart from letting us work out sine, cos or tan of 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, it also lets us work out multiples of these. And this is how you would do it. So, let's say we wanted to work out the exact value of sine 150. I'm going to give you four steps to do this. I'll talk you through this one, and then there'll be four more, which I'll also talk you through. Actually, six more. There'll be quite a few more. So in order to do this, first of all, you want to convert the angle to degrees. So sine of 150, well, it's already in degrees, it's 150. That was easy. Second step, work out the quadrant and the sine. So for this, you need to think back to your cast diagram. Here's your cast diagram. You know it starts at zero, goes around to 90, 180, 270 and then 360 for a complete turn. You do not need 90 and 270 though. You don't need them, you just need 0 and 360 and 180. So the quadrant for sine 150, well if 90 is there, 180 is there, you know where 150 is. Is sine there a positive or a negative? It's positive. And then you want to work out the size of the acute angle, which is really just the distance from 0 slash 360 or 180. So sine there is a positive, so we've got that as a positive, and the distance from 180, just go with whichever one's closer, either 0, 360 or 180, it's obviously closer to 180, and it's 30 degrees away from that. So sine 150 is the exact same as plus sine 30. And from there, find the exact value, think back to the triangles or the table from the last page, and the sine of 30 was just a half, so you would say it was equal to one half. Let's try a few more examples then. Find the exact value of sine of 300. Here's the steps that you want to follow. Here's the triangles that you will need. And let's go through it. So the sine of 300. First thing, write it in degrees. It's in degrees, that's done. After that, work out the quadrant and the sine. So think about your cast diagram. Whereabouts is 300? Well, it's coming down here, so you know that's going to be in the fourth quadrant. It's going to be at C. And you want to think, is sine there, because we're working with sine, is sine a positive or a negative? Well, in C, it would be a negative. So that's the same as negative sine. And then work out the acute angle. The acute angle, the distance from 0, 360, is just 60 degrees. So it's negative sine, 60. From there then, we know it's a negative and the sine of 60. Think about your two triangles, they're 60 degrees. The sine of 60 is the opposite over a hypotenuse, which would be root 3 over 2. Example number 2. Find the exact value of cos 3 pi over 4. So this time, first of all, convert the angle to degrees. So remember, to go from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180, divide by pi. Really, you're doing 3 times 180, divide by 4. That gives you 135. From there, work out the quadrant and the sine. So think about cast. 135 degrees, well, 0, 90, 180. There's 135, it'll be in the second quadrant. And cos there, is cos a positive or a negative? Well, cos is positive in A and C, so it'll be a negative. So that's the same as negative cos, and it's 45 degrees away from 180. So that's negative cos 45. From there, the negative will stay, and the cos of 45, Think about your two amazing me triangles. 45 degrees cos adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 over root 2. And that will be the exact value of cos of 3 pi over 4. Example number 3. Find the exact value of tan negative 30 degrees. So for this one, again, convert to degrees. We're already in degrees. We now need to work out the quadrant. Well, for this, because you're going back 30 degrees, well, really... The graph is repeating itself anyway, sine, cos, pan, they repeat themselves every 360 degrees. So you can take 360 degrees away or you can add it on. If you do that, you'd end up with 330. Really, you're just going back 30 degrees from 360. So that's the same as tan 330. What you do from that then, work out the size of the acute angle. Well, 330 degrees, it's 30 degrees away from 360. And also with the sine, tan is a negative here, so it's negative tan, 30 degrees. So keep the negative, and then the tan of 30, there's 30. If you work out the opposite over the adjacent, you end up with 1 over root 3. And that's your answer. 
Number four, find the exact value of sine 11 pi over four. First of all, write that in degrees. So multiply by 180, divide by pi, you get 495 degrees. Again, you need to think about it between zero and 360. So take away 360, because it's just repeating anyway, and you end up with sine 135 degrees. From there, think about the quadrant. So if you write out cast, 135 degrees is an S, and sine there is a positive, so that'll stay positive, and it's 45 degrees away from 180. So that's the same as sine 45. From there, sine of 45, think about your triangles. You need this triangle here. Sine of 45, opposite, over hypotenuse, will be 1 over root 2. And that's all you have to do. Next one, example 5, find the exact value of cos squared 240 degrees minus sine 270. So first thing to think is cos squared 240 really means cos of 240 squared. And also sine of 270, well because 270 is a multiple of 90, we can actually just use the graph for that. So go along to 270 degrees, think about where the sine graph would be, and it'll be a negative 1. So we can write that as cos of 240 all squared. Take away negative 1. Because sine of 270, there's sine graph, there's 270, we're at negative 1. From there, cos of 240. For this, we need to do these wee steps. So think about the quadrant and the sine, the size of the acute angle. 240 degrees, it's after 180, before 270, so it lies in here. Cos is a negative in T, and it's 60 degrees away. So it's negative cos 60. The negative will stay, and the cos of 60, if you think about the triangles, I'll just go back a page for a sec, there is 60 degrees. The cos of 60 is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2, so it's negative a half, all squared. Remember, if you square a negative, it becomes positive. So a half times a half is just a quarter. So it's a quarter plus one. One whole is just four quarters. So four quarters add one quarter gives you five quarters. And that is your answer for that. One more. Example number six. Find the size of the angle marked X in this triangle. So if you go back a few years, these are the types of questions that you had to answer. And to answer these, you would think about that famous word, Sokatoa. And in Sokatoa, you would have to decide which triangle you were using, Sokatoa. For this one here, we've got the opposite. We've got the hypotenuse. So we've got O and H. So we are using sine. Working out sine X then. So sine X is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's 4.8 over 9.6. Many of you will be realizing that 4.8 is half of 9.6, so it's just a half. From there then, x, to get that on its own, we're getting rid of sine, so that's when you do sine to the minus 1 of a half. And from there then, you can think about your triangles. Which angle will give us a half if we take the sine? So if you do sine of 60, well, the opposite over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. Sine of 45, well, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. If you do it for 30 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, it will give you 1 half, meaning then the angle x will be 30 degrees. These were the types of questions that you were doing a few years ago, and some of you were wondering, how do you know it's 30 degrees? Well, these are the exact values that you uh, use. If you memorize these triangles or the table, it will help you. Try these questions. See how they go. They're on page 59. It's exercise 4E. Check your answers as you go. You need to be able to do these. As I said, you need to memorize the triangles or the table, one or the other. I don't mind which. Personally, I prefer the triangles. And if you want to give some of the problem-solving questions a shot, they are in exercise 4F. Have a go. Make sure you do them without a calculator, though. Okay, that's the whole point. When these questions come up, they come up all the time in non-calculator. So memorise the table or the triangles and give the questions a shot. Check your answers. Let me know if you need a hand. Have fun. Bye.